Uh, this next speaker is going to be talking about, uh, well, the name of his talk is Does Einstein Index with Pepsi? Utilizing Social Data to Connect Brands to Celebrities? And I'm sure if we looked at the data, you'd find that Matt Ellsworth indexes very well with Doritos. <laughs> These guys know what I'm talking about. All right, you guys, we're going to bring the next speaker to the stage. Please put your hands together for Matt Kruger. Come on, let him hear it. Thanks a lot. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Krieger, head of uh, data analytics and insights at Husay. Uh, just curious, with a show of hands, does anybody know or has anybody heard of Husay? <laughs> tough crowd, tough crowd. <laughs> OK, so uh, I'll just jump into this video, which will be helpful. Basically, what, uh, what you're going to see is a finished product of what we do. And after showing this, I'll explain how we get there. Yellow. No, it's just something I say instead of hello now. It's my thing. Yes, certainly I can make an announcement for Chevrolet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, why don't you send it to me on my smartphone using an email? And then I will respond on a camera. I can do all that stuff now. Oh, it just came through. Thanks. How am I supposed to read this? Oh, hi, I'm Norm. Welcome to the Emoji Academy. You'll be studying under Zendaya, Jamie Chung, and me, Ashley Benson. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> no. Next time on Emoji Academy. What is this? I don't know. Well, what is this? I don't know. What is this? Ah, that one I don't know. That was uh, part one of a three-part series that we put together with Chevy for their announcement of the 2016 Chevy Cruze. So real quick overview. Who say? Uh, it's really three things. It's a native application that celebrities use to publish to uh, publish their photos and video content to social networks like Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Google Plus, and Tencent in China, and also to publish to mainstream media sites like People.com, uh, HuffPo, and Flipboard. So it's a one-stop shop really for not only traditional social networks, but also web properties. Number two, talent. We have about 2,500 celebrities using the app, and those celebrities run the gamut of entertainment and popularity. So we have celebrities with as many as 50 million followers, as well as influencers with as few as 25 to 50,000 followers. And finally, Husay is also a website, a dot-com destination. We have an editorial team who curate and create content every day around celebrities and pop culture. So around these three stanchions, we have become a one-stop shop for brands to create new premium content with celebrities. And then we promote and amplify these ads across the internet so that people actually see them. Uh, all, all the while targeting the right people using first party data. Um, and then one more video here to whet your appetite, and then we'll get into the guts of Husay. You know, being a very famous comedian means I have to be on the road a lot, away from my wife and kids. That's why, when I'm at home, I am the perfect husband and father. But between cleaning the house, folding the laundry, and making dinner, it can be tough to find time to work. Luckily, I have the capacity to do my job at the same time with the help of my phone. 
Good. It's called multitasking, and I'm really good at it. But even though I'm completely attached to my phone, I always put it away somewhere it can't distract me when I drive, because there's absolutely no text from my wife, email from an agent, or viral post, even though those are awesome, that is worth a life. It can wait. Remember, always keep your eyes on the road, not on your phone. Take the pledge and pass it on at itcanwait.com. So how did we get here to this beautiful piece of AT&T advertising? Well, the motivation really was that traditional digital advertising just doesn't work. Not on desktop and especially not on mobile. As most of you know, click rates uh, that you see on traditional digital advertising is anywhere from 0.1 to 0.5%. And one major reason that that's the case is that ad targeting is still, for some marketers, much more of a broad-based task where you, can, where you target a user who tends to like the product you're promoting or tends to be in the market for that product. This data generally comes from third-party sources and simply isn't precise enough. As a result, you cast a much wider net and with this strategy, advertise to people who aren't qualified. So in addition to this less than optimal audience targeting, there's been a lot of guessing and conjecture when it comes to choosing a spokesperson for your brand. A CMO might often perceive an athlete or celebrity to be the perfect fit for a brand based simply on gut feeling or whether he or she personally likes or knows a celebrity. So there is this imperfect information in the, in the ad industry, both in terms of knowing exactly who to target, as well as determining who that special person, aka a celebrity, is to represent your brand. However, with the introduction and eventual mass adoption of social networks, the walls of disparate and disjointed and unknown information have come crashing down. We are now all too willing to let our social networks know that I like Coke, but not Pepsi. I like Levi's and Nike running shoes, that I live in New York City. I want to visit Iceland one day. I'm a male, aged X. I went to this college. I work at Company Y, and my title is Z. I like Chevy cars, but not Ford. And by the way, I, I like Michael Ian Black and AT&T. So with that in mind, what kind of impact will it have on me vis-a-vis -vis engagement when I'm scrolling through my social news feed and see Michael Ian Black promoting AT&T's It Can Wait campaign? So what else do we know? Younger consumers have a much higher tolerance for native advertising than older customers. But younger audiences simply aren't willing to consume traditional manners of advertising. Younger demos are simply more likely to visit websites where native advertising is present, such as BuzzFeed, and increasingly more and more traditional old school media publishers. The younger demographic is a group that will adopt the brands. The advertising tone or the content itself has to be entertaining. The, the reward is there, though, as there's a lot of personal interaction within the demo. And we have seen it in our own data sets at Husay when executing paid media campaigns. For the 18 to 34 demographic, we have seen a 35% higher likelihood to like or comment on a native promoted post. And we've seen a 76% higher likelihood to share a native promoted post. So these, these young audiences consume and share content like crazy, but the key takeaway is uh, it has to be good content, innovative, and cutting edge. So at the beginning, I was hinting at all the potential touch points that can occur between the celebrity and the fan. The celebrity, Michael Ian Black, uses the Husay app to publish a humorous photo or video and syndicates it to his followers. As a follower of Michael Ian Black, I consume that content on my preferred social network. Maybe I like the post. Maybe I share it. Maybe I click on the Husay link below the picture so that I can consume more Michael Ian Black content on Husay.com. And maybe I decide to register on Husay using my social network OAuth. At every single point in this engagement waterfall, we at Husay have been collecting data. Collecting data to the point where we're able to affix 
the social likes and social interest graph to the content that you've clicked on that brought you to whosay.com. This is all first party data, and so now we have targeting capabilities across social networks as well as across the internet. And the big data speaks for itself. 400 million plus users, as well as their, those users, 2 billion likes and interests. The way that we use this data can be broken into really two buckets right now. We help brands find the celebrities whose fans most closely overlap theirs. So before our sales team even goes into a meeting, they log into what is called our Husay match report to see what group of celebrities statistically represent the brand best. You can see the format, it's pretty straightforward. We offer social reach stats, gender and age breakout, as well as the brand affinity score. The next part of the special sauce is where our creative team will come in and with a great idea on how to integrate that data and this group of celebrities with the theme. So once we win a campaign and we've created that great content with the correct celebrity, we then utilize that data again, this time targeting our first party data to those exact people who have the overlap of liking both the brand and the celebrity. And one great aspect that separates us is that we can be as specific in our targeting as necessary. Usually, you can target people who like Chevy or Alec Baldwin or Ford. Uh, with the first party data, we can target people who like Chevy and Ford and Alec Baldwin. And when you implement this type of strategy, you get great results. Here are a couple blind case studies that we've executed in the past year. You can see engagement rates instead of the 0.1 to 0.5 is, starts at 6% and goes up to 12%. The CPMs are very competitive, but really instead of the CPMs, I'd focus on the, the cost per engagements, the CPEs. That's the last row. Um, all under 20 cents. When you're looking at the return on investment of spending marketing dollars, you not only make great content, but bring in uh, cost per engagements between 10 to 20 cents, you're winning. So the ethos of our company, put simply, is to create premium content. Use data for hyper-targeted promotion and distribution, and you'll get great results for the brand or agency that you're working with. And if you make that good content instead of weak ads, you can improve the involvement of the audience and engagement. Really, the best way to achieve maximum return on the media is to then layer in your own first-party data to get a truly distributed, multi-channel, highly targeted campaign. And with that, I'll leave you with one last fun video. This is a different campaign that we did with Chevy. It involved uh, celebrities taking over a college class for a day to be the substitute teacher. We're here at Occidental College, where I'm going to be teaching a history class. Oh, uh, I'm Abraham Lincoln. You knew that, right? Now, today we're going to be picking up with where we left off on Monday. We talked about the 1954 Brown v. Board of Education okay, Supreme ahead. Court case. And I came up with a particular guest speaker who I'm going to bring in right now. <laughs> I'm thrilled to see some of the advances that America has made in civil rights, human rights, and gay rights. But I do have one complaint. Where is the indignation, the protest? You have your faces buried in your tinder and grinder. That's what it is? I'm sorry I had the wrong app listed here. If there's one thing I dislike, it's all these actors regurgitating their opinions all day. I was killed by an actor. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Alec Baldwin. How are you doing? Um, I, I realized when we came up with this gag, it would have worked if you were all like 11 years old. You're so lucky. You're going to college. And even though you're going to be poor, and you're going to be eating more fast food when you leave here because of your college debt, you are going to be smarter. I'm a little pumped, honestly. I would definitely take yeah, a class with him, yeah. Thank you, Matt Krieger. Who say?